welcome to our little trip out here in the desert. What you saw is some of the vast wide open spaces that the desert seems to normally provide. But oftentimes there's key pieces of real estate or elements in the environment that are that you can pick out after you learn to uh, recognize them. And what we have here is what would look like otherwise a, a pile of rocks, but in closer examination you'll find that there's some lines because they were built by humans and uh, they're at a choke point between one lake where it spills over into another lake and that choke point is significant and what we have here is basically they're, they're fish traps, they're ancient fish traps done by the Indians perhaps thousands of years ago when the upper lake had fish in it and it would pour over and down this stream bed the fish of course would be going with the water and they would build these piles of rock and these piles of rock would let the water go through of course but not the fish and so they would have a fish resource and while that seems a little odd out here in the desert I can tell you I've actually seen catfish in this upper lake because they were brought in by the river when the Mojave River would flood the various parts of the river that normally run would have catfish and bluegill and other fish like that and they would come down here and then they would live in the lake for sometimes two to three years and get quite large. I've seen catfish this big in this lake and of course then another running of the river would fill the lake up and overflow it into the next lower lake and that's when the Indians would uh, make their move. I'm sure that these fish traps were probably made over at least hundreds of years. It took a lot of time to bring these rocks in and it was something that uh, generation after generation of Indians no doubt used, built, modified, and uh, sometimes probably went, you know, many years, maybe even decades before they were used, but the tradition was passed on on how to use them and when to use them. And we can only speculate on to when was the last time uh, they were used but it may have only been a couple of hundred years ago or it may have been a thousand. We really don't know. You can see the stone here uh, is the size a person can pick up and carry and I suspect even the kids probably carried them. They were probably carried off of these mountains right here. Every one of these rocks you see here in the fish traps somebody picked up up there in them hills and uh, carried it here and so it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work and so this was a very valuable resource to them. If you look at some of these uh, uh, structures you can see and kind of tell that they were built over time and as the river and the lake level changed and maybe even the species of fish changed these various uh, traps would have been adjusted. Uh, you can see there's a fairly high hill here and then you can actually see this corridor down here. It probably at one time was either fenced off and, and of course we have the rock of course is still here but this might have gone down to something that was actually fenced off with sticks and adjusted that way to catch either bigger fish or smaller fish as was needed and of course that's no longer here. We can only speculate on that and then we can look over here we can see again part of that structure with some like chambers where perhaps people would have run the fish into them, speared them and then thrown them out and, and this higher dam would have been part of a, an adjustment and you can see here between this two high points you can still see a bedrock line here and either that was maybe to adjust the dam height or that's where they went, might have stuck poles into the ground and the rocks were there to hold the poles up. And I'm sure when they did get the fish they probably got them in vast numbers more than they could use at the time but they either smoked them or dried them and of course uh, we know the Native Americans smoked and dried fish uh, up in the Pacific Northwest and I have no doubt that these people had that same technology
and there would have been a lot of mesquite uh, around the dry lake bed that they could have used for smoking and of course the typical dry air of the desert would have been good if you cut the fish into thin pieces and dried them out and would have been a resource that like this they could have caught enough fish for the tribe to probably live on for a good part of the year once everything worked right uh, and that would have relieved them from hunting bighorn sheep or rabbit or other animals which uh, would have helped those populations and no doubt they were also here uh, for probably things like the cattails would have been edible and other edible plants and so this was just part of their diet and probably only on certain years. There are places where uh, you can tell they had campfires and there's still pottery here. Now pottery of course is a fairly new invention uh, relatively speaking to the human habitation of the continent but they were here. I don't know if they made the pottery locally or traded it but it's safe to say there wasn't a lot of pottery here. These Indians probably relied more on basket making than pottery. I've been told that amongst the debris and the rocks that they have found archaeologists have found uh, scales and stuff like that and they can determine that they were in fact fish traps and of course their placement makes it pretty obvious what they are. Some people wonder what tribes or what groups of people might have used uh, these fish traps or lived here and we know that most of the Indians in this area in historic times were Paiute, Shoshone uh, Indians. However, that was the groups that were here in historic times. And when you go back a thousand years or more, it's hard to say what tribe they actually were. They would have been a separate uh, culture, really. Uh, so, but then again, you might have been able to say they were still the ancestors. But a lot of these people moved around. Of course, they were nomadic. But I think in, in, in fairness to say that probably whoever started these fish traps was probably a long time ago and either were the ancestors to the Paiutes or Shoshones rather than Paiutes or Shoshones. But, and defining that by the customs, religion, and the technology that they had. And, and so I would say that the Indians that were here, the last Indians that were here, um, were probably not of the same culture of the first Indians that were here. It's just a fascinating thing that can kind of lead you to a better understanding of the desert as a whole. For instance, realizing that sometimes there's actually fish in this dry and arid land and that there's enough fish to actually be a resource for people. And it's kind of an amazing thing that something in this dry lake and sand dunes and barren rock that you would actually be fishing. And it's one of the oddities of the desert. And with that, I thank you.